Gold is the most important resource in TFT, and there are many ways to earn more gold, but there is an infinite number of opportunities to waste it. Making more gold means you can buy more XP and level up faster. You can also buy more expensive units and refresh your shop more often so you can find the specific units that you want to play. This guide is here to help you manage your economy like a challenger player, so you can win your game simply by having more gold than your opponent. We will go through all the different ways you can get more gold, and then I will show you specifically the most efficient economy management strategies you can use to win your games. I also have a transcript of this video with the link in the description for those who prefer to read or hate hearing French accents. First of all, let's have a look at how everyone can get gold every single turn. Every turn, you can get gold from different sources. You get 5 gold per turn and this is given to everyone without exception. You can also earn 1 gold if you win a PvP round, meaning you play against someone else and you win that round. You can get from 0 to 5 gold thanks to interest per turn. And then, 0 to 3 gold per turn thanks to having a streak. So if you do the math correctly, the maximum amount of gold you can get per turn is 14. If you're on a win streak, you win your PvP round and you have 5 gold from interest. Now let's talk a little bit more about interest. The more gold you have, the more you will gain from interest with a rate of 10 to 1. Meaning that if you have between 20 and 29 gold at the end of the round, the game will give you 2 more gold. There's a limit and you can't get more than 5 gold of interest per turn. So there is no point in keeping more than 50 gold at the end of a round. There is of course an augment that allows you to go past that limit, but it's kinda rare and I don't want to focus too much on it. And the other way of winning more gold than your opponent in streaking. Streaking means you have had multiple PvP fights in a row that ended with the same results, win or loss. So if you win or lose 3 to 4 fights in a row, you get 1 additional gold. If you win or lose 5 fights in a row, you get 2 gold. And if it's 6 or more in a row, you get 3 gold. This will be super important later when when we are going to establish different strategies, you can leverage to have more gold. There are also many other ways to get more gold. Some of them are regular, you can get from orbs and the carousel, and some others are more random, like augments, portals, and encounter. So let's have a quick look at them. So for the orbs, these are the loot you get from PvE fights, and you can obtain many things like items, units, gold, spatula, term of threats, etc. Most people in TFT will say that having units is exactly as having gold, because you can simply sell them and get gold from that. Then at the carousel, it is happening every time at the middle of a new stage. And this is where you can select different units moving around and get also items from that. If you sell that unit, you get gold. So that's why this is another way to get gold. You have also augments and they mostly appear as stages. 2-1, 3-2 and 4-2. And you have many choices in these augments and within these augments you have those which are called econ augments. Basically these are augments that give you an advantage in economy because either they give you gold or they give you more XP so you don't need to pay that XP so it's like a you're having gold but they give you units so you can sell these units and have gold at the same time then after the augments you have the portals at the beginning of each game you will have to choose between three different portals and some of them will give you more gold or units actually i just made a lie because thanks to this new set and the mechanic encounter sometimes you don't have a portal but sometimes you have an encounter instead and some of the encounters can give you more gold such as tristana that simply gives gold to everyone at the beginning of the game or sometimes in the middle of the game as well and of course you have still other ways to get more gold but it's rather rare or difficult to get regularly. First of all, you have the trait Fortune. This trait allows you to get rewards if you play it and lose multiple rounds in a row. And you can actually get a lot of gold from that, but you need to lose a lot of fights with Fortune in order to get this amount of gold. And then you have Artifacts. Some Artifacts give you gold if you complete some conditions. You have Mogul's Mail that gives you gold if you can stack it 40 times in a fight. And you have Collector that can sometimes give you gold if you kill the units with the Collector. Now that I've talked about all the different ways to get gold, I would like to spend a bit more detail about augments. Because like I said, there are many augments that help you have more money, but don't forget that if you pick such an augment, you lose the opportunity to have an augment that directly makes your boss stronger. So it might be tempting to pick three augments like late game specialist and balanced budget in a game to be extremely rich and be able to push level 9, even level 10 and get a lot of opportunity to buy 5 cost or 4 cost champions, but you will most likely lose many fights against people who chose three augments that makes their board stronger like inspiring epitaph, cybernetic bulk and healing orbs. So be careful with the economy augment as they can be useful but if you pick too much of them your board will still be weak. Now that you know all sources of earning gold let's use practical examples to show how you can optimize your strategy to increase your odds of winning games especially if you look for one cost reward, two cost reward, three cost reward or if you just want to play a fast eight comp. So the first example I will want to use with you is with one cost reward comps such as Fated Yasuo and Ari. The leveling and gold management 
management strategy I'm about to describe is efficient for all the one cost reward columns, not just for the example I'm providing here. But with the example, I just wanted to make it easier for you to understand and maybe project yourself easier in the game with this comp. So if you want to play one cost reward comp, here's the leveling strategy you want to follow. During stage two, you will make sure that you never buy any XP. You don't want to spend gold into leveling up. You will also try to aim for a loose streak of five rounds, meaning that you will try to lose all the rounds during stage two and you will intentionally make your board weaker. This is easier to achieve if you rush your interest thresholds as fast as you can to get more gold because most likely you will try not to keep expensive units, you will sell them, they will help you have a better economy interest that way but also you will have a weaker board so it can go as well together. And of course you will only keep units you will want to play. So if we want to play Yasuo, Ari with a fated comp, you mostly want to keep Yasuo, Ari and all the fated units you can find. You will also pick a 3 cost champion at the carousel with the relevant item. That way you can sell that 3 cost champion and that makes 3 more gold. And the aim of this whole strategy is to be at 40 gold before fighting Krugs and of course you still level 4 because you never spend any money into XP. I would like to add one thing, if you have a non-counter or if you have a augment that actually makes you have much more gold, you can have much more than 40 gold. But let's say on average always try to be at 40 gold at the end of stage 2. Then during stage 3 you will want to slow roll for your 3 stars. Slow rolling means that you will stay always above 50 gold and use the extra gold you earn every turn to refresh your shops a few times to find your units. Once you get the 3 stars you wanted to have, you can start investing gold into XP and start rushing your level. From this point and until the end of the game, only push to your next level if you can keep at least 30 gold after. This is extremely important because if you lose too much gold interest then it will take too much time to get back to 50 gold. Okay now let's talk about the 2 cost reward and how you want to adapt your economy strategy to optimize your chances to get your comp with 3 stars on the 2 cost comps. So for this example I want to illustrate with Gnar scenario. The leveling and gold management strategy is going to be kind of similar but there are a few differences I'm going to talk about them. So most of the time you kind of want to have the same start as if you were playing a 1 cost reward. It means that you will never buy any XP, you will aim for a full loss streak to maximize your chances to get 50 gold before Krugs and then after you will aim for a loss streak obviously because you don't want to spend any resources in making your board stronger. But here the difference is instead of slow rolling at stage 3-1 you will keep your loss streak until stage 3-2. At stage 3-2 you will push level 6 and you will roll. You will roll because you will need to stabilize your board. You will need to find 2 cost units and most of them should be upgraded into 2 star units. So basically you want to have Tena 2, Atrox 2, Gnar 2, you understand this kind of stuff. That way you will start winning fights and stop losing too much health during stage 3. Once you have stabilized your board it means that you are having a strong comp that is enough to win most of the fights in the stage 3, you will rebuild your economy back to 50 gold. And then from that point, you will start low rolling for your 3 star units. And once you get them, you cannot do the same as if you play the 1 cost reward comp, it means that you can start pushing your levels, make sure you always have 30 gold when you push, so you can rebuild your economy faster and push your level extremely faster. Okay, now let's talk about the strategies, and here you have 2 strategies you want to use when you're playing a 3 cost reward such as Yone and Alune at the same time. So you have one that is more like a safe strategy that you want to play most of the time and there's another one that is more risky and you will play only if you don't really have the choice and I suggest you not to play the second strategy if you're kind of a beginner because even intermediate player might have a hard time with this second strategy. But anyway I'm going to share both of them that way you know everything you can know about it. So for the first strategy is the safe strategy. It means that you will try to play strong board. You will try to save your HP as much as possible and you will mostly do so only if you have a good start meaning that you have units with items that are good on them or you have good augment or you have many two star units so if you have these conditions you might want to start a win streak instead of a loss streak and for that you will push level 4 at stage 2 1 and you will play mostly with your two star units and you will also use your items and you will position yourself so you have much more chance to win your fight if you won three fights before the carousel of stage 2 you will push level 5 at stage 2 6 i mean you have have a chance to start a full win streak so go ahead and push your level play more aggressively so you can keep that win streak the idea of this strategy is to be level 5 with 20 gold before fighting Krugs and you can of course expect to have more gold if you have an encounter that gives you gold or if you have a nomad that gives you gold so during stage 3 you will still try to play strong board if you have a win streak you will try to defend it as much as possible if you don't have it it's fine it's not the end of the world you will still try to play to win fights because you can still get gold from winning fights so 
most of the time you will want to push level 6 as stage 3 2 and from this point try to reach 50 gold as fast as you can to maximize your gold income with the interest of course since you're trying to win fights you always have to try to make your bones stronger and you can do that by looking at the shops and play around with your two star units that you hit or replace some of the one cost unit with the three cost units that are in your shop of course you want to buy any relevant three cost units such as yone alun even if you don't play them immediately because this is the type of count you will play later then during stage 4 you will push level 7 at stage 4 1 and you will roll to find two star units basically you just want to stabilize your board around the main carries that you want to play once you are able to win a few fights you will rebuild your economy back to 50 gold you will slow roll then for your three stars and this might be a little bit painful you might lose a lot of fights in the middle and that's why saving a lot of hp at the beginning of the game will help you buy the time you need in order to find your three star units and as usual once you get the three star units yone alun or any other comp you can start investing gold into xp and rush your level but of course you must make sure that whenever you push your level you always have 30 gold left so you can rebuild your economy faster okay now let's talk about the second strategy to play a three cost reward that is a bit more risky or should i say a lot more risky so basically the idea is to have a full loss trick strategy from stage 2 to stage 3 5 and meaning that during the whole moment you will never win a fight you will lose a lot of health but you will have much more gold than anyone else this is very dangerous because it means that if you play to stabilize at stage 3 5 by pushing level 7 at stage 3 5 and you roll to find your units and if you don't find them you literally lose the game immediately so that's why it's kind of risky but if you know what you're doing you can try this because sometimes you have no choice and this is the only strategy available to you so basically like i said it's very simple never win a fight until stage 3 5 push level 7 at stage 3 5 roll down in order to find yone 2 alun 2 in this kind of example or any kind of upgrades if you play any other three cost reward comp then after that once you've stabilized your board when you're sure you're winning fights because you probably lost a lot of health so you really want to win fights you can reroll your economy and then reroll for your three stars that's lacking and after that you play like normally meaning that you push your level and you make sure you always have a good amount of gold so you can rebuild your economy faster okay now let's talk about the last strategy that you need to know in order to be able to play every kind of comp you want to play in the set so on this example we're going to use a focus comp such as invoker lilia it has a lot of focus units and it has a lot of five cost units we usually call this type of comp the fast eight comp because you need to push level eight quite fast but you need to have enough gold when you're level eight so you can reward and buy the expensive champions it's not just being level eight it's also being level eight with at least 40 gold left so you can buy all the expensive champions and since this comp requires you to have a huge amount of gold and you can't have that amount of gold before long in the game it's usually better to play this comp if you saved a good amount of hp during the early game so you can buy that time by tanking a few losses i don't recommend you to play this kind of comp or to use this kind of strategy if you have a very bad early start and you have literally no health because most of the time you will die before even finding the four cost and five cost units so if you still want to play this kind of comp is how you should play during stage two like i said earlier you should aim for the win so you should win as many fights as possible if you have a win streak it's even better so that's why you want to play with two star units you want to use your items and you want to position yourself so you have better chances to win your early fight and it's just the same as i said before for the three cost reward you want to be level five with 20 gold before fighting the crux during stage two and you can expect to have more gold if you have an encounter or an augment or portal that give you more gold during stage three it's really similar to what i said earlier you push level six at stage three two and you try to reach 50 gold as fast as you can to maximize your gold income if your board is a little bit weak or if you have too many copies of units you might give a couple rolls to find these copies and upgrade them into two star units so you have a much stronger mid game than if you didn't do that okay now let's talk about stage four because this is going to be important usually you want to push level seven as stage four one or maybe you already did it before because you had a lot more gold thanks to an encounter or things like this and of course you might want to roll a little bit just like i said for level six but at level seven if you feel like you're really close to having a very strong board just by finding a few upgrades but if you don't it's fine you don't need to roll because you need to also rebuild your economy back to 50 gold and usually it's at stage 4 5 when you're going to push level 8 because you will have at least 40 gold left after pushing so you can buy and find any focus unit that you want to play from this point you might want to roll until you have most focus units with two stars and then after you can stop rolling the idea 
is like you stop rolling when you are strong enough to win the fight. You don't need to spend more gold if you're already winning. Instead, you want to save that gold so you can rebuild your icon back to 50 gold and then after you can try to aim to push level 9 to find the 5 cost unit. Of course, if you lost too much health, you will never be able to push level 9 and you kinda have to survive so you kinda roll every turn and try to find as many upgrades as possible so you can avoid being 8th and maybe finish 6th or 4th depending on the situation. Now let's talk about the stage 5. There is no relevant round where it's best to push level 9. Basically I would say try to push level 9 with at least 30 gold so you can roll a little bit and find more upgrades because if you push level 9 and you have 10 gold left you will never find your upgrades that you need and you might never find it at all because your economy will be too low and it's too hard to rebuild it later. With this video you should be able to optimize your economy like top players. However if TFT is still new to you you will find this guide a bit difficult to digest and to help you with your digestion I will recommend you to watch this video and tips and tricks that will help you get better at TFT. Until next video see you at the top of the ladder.